Here's a GRE algebra question. Let's take a look. In the sequence B1, B2, B3, dot, 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 B100, the kth term is defined by B sub K is equal to 1 over K minus 1 over K plus 1 for all integers K from 1 to 100. What is the sum of the 100 terms of the sequence? Whoa. Uh, I will say right now, this is a tough GRE question, right? But before we really dive into it, I want to make sure we understand what the word sequence is. What is a sequence? Well, a sequence is simply a pattern of numbers. And you're probably familiar with some of them. I don't know, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, right? Uh, the Fibonacci sequence, that's a fun one. I won't go into it, but, but look it up, right? In any case, a sequence you could describe as a, a pattern or a, a rule to find the next number in a, in a progression, right? And so in this sequence that we have here, we are, our numbers are labeled, right? So B1 is the first term. B2 is the second term. B3 is the third term, and so on and so forth. The kth term, you might have thought that was a typo when you read it, but the kth term just describes some number. So for instance, uh, if k is 56, we're talking about the 56th term. So here's where our rule comes into play, our sequence rule, right? This is a way to find a particular term. Let's say we wanted to find the 56th term. That would mean that k was equal to 56, so it would be b sub 56, the 56th term, is equal to 1 over 56 minus 1 over 56 plus 1. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to get started on just finding what the first, second, third term is, just to see if we can get, find any sort of shortcut. And this is often a very good strategy. I know it sounds insane to just get to work like this and start doing it with brute force, but oftentimes when you do, you see a pattern start to emerge that you can then leverage to get to the answer option. So our goal here is to add up, as if this problem weren't hard enough, it's to add up all 100 of these numbers. So in theory, what we could do is find each one of these numbers and then add them up. But as we'll see, when we get started, we might notice a pattern emerge. Okay, here we go. Let's start with the first term. What is B sub one? The first term, so when uh, K equals one, is going to be, if I plug it into this, one over one minus one over one plus one or one over two. Right? And what does that equal? Well, 1 minus 1 half is equal to 1 half. Great. What's the second term in the sequence? The second term in the sequence, if k is 2, is 1 over 2 minus 1 over 2 plus 1, also known as 1 over 3. And we got to use a little fraction uh, subtraction here, right? 1 over 2 is 3 over 6. Uh, 1 over 3 is 2 over 6, so if I subtract that out, I get 1 over 6. And then I'll find the third term, and then we'll check in for a little, a little shortcut. Uh, and I find that the third term, when k is 3, is 1 over 3 minus 1 over uh, 3 plus 1, or 4, right? And again, I'll use my fractions here. This is uh, 4 over 12, and this is 3 over 12. And so that is 4 over 12 minus 3 over 12, also known as 1 over 12. Okay. I just want to check in on something here. What is our north star in this problem? What are we looking to do? We're looking to add up these 100 terms. So we could keep going here, right? We could keep going and write these all out. But at a minimum, this the sum of all these numbers has to be 1 half, right? Because for all of these numbers, right, I'm getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, but I will never get negative, right? The, the second term here is always going to be smaller than the first one. So I'm getting smaller and smaller and smaller as far as fractions go, but at a minimum, the number that I, that I have is one half. Well, look at these answer options. Is one over 10,100 greater than one half? No, it's not. Neither is one over 101 and neither is one over 100, right? What, what I get by doing this is a way to just get down to a 50-50, right? Which isn't ideal, right? Ideally, you'd like to solve the problem, but if you're stuck for time, just starting out, sometimes you'll notice a little shortcut like this. Okay, but here's the cheat code that I'm gonna give you. Um, let's look at these numbers together, right? Here, I'm doing one over one minus one half, 
and I want to add that to 1 half minus 1 third. And I want to add that to 1 3rd minus 1 4th. Now I'm going to get rid of what the individual sums here are because the, the goal is to just add these all together. Well look what happens when I do. When I add b1 to b2, I have negative 1 half right here and I have 1 half right here. Those are going to cancel out. When I add b2 to b3 or when I add b3 into the mix, negative 1 3rd is going to cancel out. And this is going to go on and on and on up to the 100th term. Right? We can just write, we'll write one more here. B4 is equal to 1 fourth minus 1 over 5. So that's going to cancel out. So let's go to the hundredth term. I'll write it over here. B sub 100 is equal to 1 over 100 minus 1 over 101. Right? As I've seen in this pattern, all of these numbers in the middle cancel out. Right? So I'm, this one doesn't have anything to cancel with. I'm left with 1 over 1. But I've canceled all the numbers, including 1 over 100, because the 99th term cancels out there. And I'm left with 1 over 1 minus 1 over 101. So that's 1 minus 1 over 101. A lot of ones in this problem. And when I do that, when I use my fraction rule, that comes out to 100 over 101. For more GRE tips and tricks, or to sign up for my live online course, follow the link on my profile.